we need to turn the back of this. This is the old takeoff for this uh, inlet adapter pipe. And we've got a weld back on. Um, and this has still got some of the old weld and looks like some of the old pipe still attached to it. So I need to turn this and what I really want to do is hold it on the inside and obviously turn it here. So in order to hold this we have found an old homemade kind of an expanding collet um, which a little bit of an adaptation is going to do the job pretty good. Let's take a look at that. This is a mandrel that came with uh, when I bought one of the other lathes that we've got. Um, it's a homemade affair. Backside of this screw has been turned to a taper, corresponding taper inside here, so that when you tighten it up, it expands the the ting um, to grip the piece that you're putting on it. So I've just skimmed this, not very much, so that. That fits on there, and I can find the Allen key. Tighten that up in the middle. It's quite stiff. It's not. It's not a terribly springy thing. Not like a proper manufactured collet, but. Um, I think that's secure. That should be good enough to turn it. Let's turn this old mangle of a lathe on and see how we get on. Still a bit uneven. I'll take a little bit more off and then that will have to do us. I thought we'd take a look at the uh, some of these old mandrels that came with the lathe that I bought about 20 years ago and they've just been sat in a, in a box on a shelf all that time. And yeah, sooner or later you find a use for these things and this is the one I was just using. Um, now if we take a, a closer look at how these are made, they're dead simple things. So 
yeah, just turn down just some random old off cut of metal. It's got a saw cut left on the end of that, doesn't matter. Um, turned down to fit in the chuck, okay, but then this end obviously turned down to take your piece. The hole, I think, has been done just with a centre drill, and then the head of the bolt has been turned back to suit so that when that's screwed in it opens that up and it doesn't even go in very far so you've got a groove here behind where your part butts up against to give it some uh, flexibility so that the thing will actually expand and then obviously some slots cut in it and they're just rough cut with a hacksaw don't need to be straight at all just needs to do the job so yeah simple as you like um, handy things to have and I think all of these ones here that I've got take the same screw in the end smaller one here for a what, smaller diameter piece, a little bit shorter, but exactly the same sort of thing. And this one's actually drilled all the way through, tapped. I think this is an M10 bolt. Got a bigger one here, similar again. <laughs> Very obviously, just at um, the end of a bar, just happened to be lying around. So, yeah, they don't need to be pretty at all. Um, another one here. It's obviously take a longer piece and this has just got one split down the length. And of course the, another way of doing it would be to not, not to split it but to have a just a fat washer on the end if you've just got a ring, a thin wall piece of tube, a short piece of tube that you just want to skim the OD on stick it on there, clamp that up again pretty rough old things but if you you don't want to spend time making these things look pretty they just need to do the job slight variation this was something that I made using the same sort of principle yeah wonky saw cuts and I just used a countersink, countersunk bolt here just a standard 90 degrees that doesn't actually work as well as a 60, 60 degree one. This is better. Um, but this wasn't actually for turning. This was just to hold something, a very thin sheet metal pressing that I needed to hold to polish across the top. So, yeah, same sort of thing. Put your piece on there. Do the bolt up. That expands and holds your part. quick and easy way of holding things mostly on a lathe but yeah if you need to hold something for any other kind of operation then similar sort of thing will do the job